Hey, what's up guys? It's Dan here from the Crystal Chaos TCG and today we are going to be doing an update video on set 1 and this video is also the 50 subscriber special so thank you guys everybody so 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 much for subscribing and watching my videos I really I can't do it without any of you guys you guys I I'm just so happy and I'm so grateful that you guys enjoy watching my videos and are subscribing so thank you guys so much for 50 subscribers so now that we hit 50 subscribers is I will release a discord server for the crystal chaos TCG on there you can talk about the game ask any questions give me any ideas talk about different strategies of the game but I will explain more about the Discord server at the end of the video, so stick around for that. But right now, let's jump in to the update for set 1. So today, I'm going to be showing you a few more cards that will be in Crystal Chaos set 1. And they are mostly resource cards, there's a few creature cards in these cards that I'm about to show you. But, but there's also a lot more cards that you pro guys have probably not seen that, that I won't be showing you guys today. And that is because soon I will be creating a new series which is like the Crystal Showcase series. Where I will be showcasing every creature and every crystal. So stay tuned for those videos guys. And let me know in the comments section down below if you guys are excited for that. So yeah. But for now let's jump into these new cards. So the first card we have is called Ancient Chocolate Bar. And Ancient Chocolate Bar is a single use resource card. And it's ability reads both players must shuffle three dead creatures into their deck. So it's a really really good card. It's a common too as well. And I think that this would go really good in an Ignis sort of deck since Ignis creatures they have low health so they tend to die faster and you but they still have a lot of power so you'd want a way to keep them to get them back into your hand or into your deck so this is a good card for that because you might have a lot of dead Ignis creatures so Ancient Charcoal Bar is a really good card. The next card we have is the first super rare non-creature card in set 1. And that is a permanent resource which is Insomnia. And Insomnia, is it, like I said, is a permanent resource. And its ability reads, if a creature attacks a creature that it cannot kill, subtract health from the attached creature equal to the attacking creature's power. So this is a this can be a really really game a really really game changing card. So let's say your opponent has an obtuse plate or something else that has a lot of health and you have a fat feather. Originally if you were to attack obtuse with your fat feather, it wouldn't do anything because fat feather doesn't have enough power to kill obtuse. You do not have higher power than its health and it just does nothing. However, if you have Insomnia played, it reads if a creature attacks a creature that it cannot kill, subtract health equal to the opposing creature's power. So what I can do in theory is I can, have, if I have Fat Feather, I can attack Obtuse. It still will do something. So if I attack Obtuse, instead of just doing nothing, it subtracts Obtuse's health by 110. I can end up killing Obtuse even though I don't have enough power but I can do that in mul using multiple turns by keeping attacking it because I subtract the power from the opposing creature's health. So Insomnia is definitely a really really game changing um, card and that is why it is a super rare. The next card we have is a creature card and it's actually the boss monster for the Noctis crystal in set 1 and that is Crystallia. And Crystallia is a rare, and it has an and she has an ability which reads: When you play this creature, you may pay extra shards and return a dead Noctis creature to your deck with half the amount of shards you paid extra. So basically, when you play Crystallia, you can pay extra shards, and 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 if you want, you can return a dead Noctis creature back to your deck goes along with the fact that she she's using black magic to to awaken another soul from the dead 
and uh, Gohanna goes along with Noctis being evil and stuff. In the lore for Crystal Chaos, Crystallia plays a big part um, in the end of set 1 and the beginning of set 2. I might go further into detail on that in another video. But the next card we have is an equipable card. It is a rare card called Mutiny. And it has another really interesting ability. Also, Crystallia um, is on the card. But it has another really interesting ability which reads, The attached creature must attack another creature every turn unless there are zero creatures on both players' pitches. And it may also attack creatures on the same pitch as it. So basically what it means is that the main intent for mutiny is that if your opponent has two creatures, you can attach mutiny to one of them. If you play it right, you can basically force your opponent to kill their own creature with their own creature. So it is a really, really good card. And also you can use it in, uh, on yourself for a good reason too. If you have two creatures played on your pitch that are rivals, you can attach mutiny to one of them, use that creature to kill one of your end creatures and get your rival ability off. If you don't know what rival abilities are, I will make another rule video explaining all the different crystals, because I haven't really explained that before, but mutiny will be a really, really good and versatile card. So the next card we have is a is another permanent resource and that is called Ventusian Storms and every turn it reads every turn the player whose turn it is must show the opponent one different card in their hand so basically it tricks around with your opponent but it also you it can show your opponent their your own your own cards so basically it's a way to open up the game and peek in at that your opponent's hand but they also get to look at your hand in return eventually so the next card we have is a chaos card and that is called golden bath of riches and golden bath of riches reads when your opponent cosplays a creature gain that creature's amount of shots really good in a terror deck since terror is all about using shards to their advantage so golden bath of riches is also a really good card no matter what so golden bath of riches is a really good card just to use in any deck they tend to run out of shards a lot so cards like these um are really good to have in any deck the next card we have is a bridge booster and it is actually the second super rare non-creature card in set one and that is called doomsday vault on Doomsday Vault reads, when a creature enters this bridge, it must stay on this bridge for two turns, and then it may return back to its creature area, and once it returns, kill every creature on both players' pitches. So, Doomsday Vault is a really, really good card, but you have to play it kind of right, because when you play it on your bridge and you use its ability, you might be vulnerable. Well, you are going to be vulnerable for a couple turns, but then you can get its amazing ability off. But what I forgot about when I was creating this card is that you can actually play bridge boosters on your opponent's pitch. So Doomsday Vault is even a better card than I imagined it, because what you can do is you can play it on your opponent's bridge and then they they would have to enter that bridge for two turns um, and stay in it so they're vulnerable so what it, it is also it's a really versatile card because it can also make your opponent not want to attack and it's kind of a, another good card to stall a little bit but overall doomsday vault is a really good card and it's a really good card to get the next card we have is an equipable card and it is called lost treasure map and Lost Treasure Map reads, after three turns, gain shards equal to the attached creature's shards. So just like Golden Bath of Riches, Lost Treasure Map is a really good card for getting shards to your hand. And especially if you're like me, like I said earlier, you'd want cards like this in your deck because I tend to run out of shards um, really easily. So cards like these are really good. And also, it's best to play on a creature with a lot of health because if they have a lot of health they tend to be higher shard creatures and they are 
also hard to get past, so it's more likely that it will stay alive for three turns so you can get the ability, and then you will get more shards since it is a higher shard creature. So Lost Treasure Map, just like Golden Bath of Riches, is a card that is really good and versatile and sh will be used in a lot of decks. This next card is a permanent resource and it works, it combos really well with cards like Lost Treasure Map and Golden Bath of Riches. That is called the Temple of Fortune. Now, the Temple of Fortune has an ability which reads, whenever either player gains shards at any time other than the start of the turn, which means the draw phase, um, draw one card. That basically means if you have any card ability or anything like an, like Lost Treasure Map or, or Golden Bath of Riches, which gets you shards other than the four shards you draw at the beginning of your, you gain at the beginning of your turn, you will benefit off of it with the Temple of Fortune by being able to draw a card. So there's lots of good combos you'd want to do with the Temple of Fortune. Um, it's really good, especially in decks where you tend to use a lot of the, these types of cards because you basically get a combo off of it and when you gain shards you can combo off of it really well. The next card is an equipable card and it's probably one of my favorite equipable cards in the entire set and that is called Cursed Tiki Mask. Um, now, Cursed Tiki Mask is a common equipable, and it reads, When the attached creature dies, all of the equipable cards attached to it must then attach to another creature on the same pitch. If there are no other creatures, kill this card. So, it is kind of a mouthful, but <laughs> the ability basically means, if you attach this equipable to another creature, that has another equipable attached to it, it kind of curses the equipable sort of that all of the equipables must be replayed and replayed until they have no more creatures. So one of the good ways to use it is if you have attached an equipable with a negative ability to one of your opponent's creatures, then and you also have cursed tiki mask, you'd want to attach it to that because that means if you kill that creature with the equipable with a negative ability it basic and your opponent also has another creature it basically curses them and it forces them to stay with that equipable with a negative ability because instead of dying the equipable would attach to the other creature but it could also be a good thing for you because if you have a equipable with a positive ability on your pitch then then you can attach cursed tiki mask to that so when your opponent kills that creature instead of the good equipable dying you can attach it to another one of your creatures and get more use out of it so cursed tiki mask is a really really good card and i love the concept of it and it's probably my favorite equipable in the entire set this next card is a single use resource card it's a really simple one and it's called cryptic labyrinth and cryptic labyrinth reads gain one shard for every two cards you have in your hand so just like lost treasure map and golden bath of riches cryptic labyrinth is a good way to get shards especially if you tend to have a lot of cards in your hand and don't if and don't tend to play a lot um, Cryptic Labyrinth, you can get rewarded for having a lot of cards in your hand. And also, <laughs> I, I, I like it because during the game, if I get bored, I can just try and solve the maze and try and get to the middle. <laughs> so yeah, that is Cryptic Labyrinth. And the final card I will be showing to you guys today is a creature card, and it is called Storm Scoundrel and Storm Scoundrel is a Ventus creature. He has 200 power and 250 health. Very basic creature and he costs four shards to play. And he, yeah, he's just a very basic creature to b help balance out the game. I I I really like his artwork actually, especially and the, basically the backstory of him is that he's a knight slash a ninja that like lurks in the darkness of Ventus and and jumps between clouds seeking its enemies and um, pouncing on them when they least expect it 
So that's just his backstory, but he's a yeah, but he's a basic creature. Not a lot to him, but I still like him. So those were all the cards I'm gonna be showing you today. There are still a lot more cards in set one that you guys probably haven't seen. But like I said earlier, I will be making crystal showcase videos where I go over every crystal, every creature from each crystal and the support card and some cards that combo well with it. So um, stay tuned for those videos. But like I said at the beginning of the video, now I will explain the details about the Discord server. So thank you guys again so much for um, subscribing. I, I can't believe it that we've gotten 50 subscribers. 50 subscribers is just awesome to me. I want to give thanks by creating a Discord server. So if you guys want to join that Discord server, I'll leave a link down in the description below to the Discord server. On the Discord server, there will be different channels for talking about the meta of the game, different strategies. Um, you can give any ideas you want, um, ask any questions. Um, uh, eventually, there's going to be a channel for Untap when I eventually um, release a Crystal Chaos, when I eventually upload Crystal Chaos to Untap or whatever um, they do for Untap, so you guys can play together using Untap. But yeah. Definitely, guys, thank you guys so much for um, subscribing, um, and please join the Discord server. So, yeah, that's the video. I hope you guys have um, enjoyed taking another sneak peek at set one, um, seeing a new update of new cards. Let me know if you guys are excited for the Crystal Showcase videos. Um, thank you guys again so, so, so much for subscribing. I can't believe we hit 50 subscribers. I know I sound like a broken record, but I really, really, really appreciate your support. Um, so yeah, please go join the Discord server. I'll leave that in the description. Um, thank you guys again so, so much. Um, I hope you guys have an amazing day, and bye.